It's a real honor to be here today. Uh, this is a piece of Boston. This is history. Uh, this is, Tarbell was born 150 years ago, 152 years ago, I guess. A lot of things have died away in the world of, of modern pain. They've come, they've gone. There's been a large flash, a lot of noise. But we're looking at something that hasn't gone away for really good reason, and that's the, the you're seeing the personal observations, the discovery of beauty when you're looking something in the face like some daunting judge. And are we still talking beauty when we're looking at a judge? <laughs> is a very specific way of thinking, a line of thinking, but it's impressionist based. It's impressionism meaning what Velasquez meant was painting what you see and drawing forth from it the beauty and really trying to get to the viewer the beauty of what you see in front of you. This is a very personal uh, uh, approach to painting that has everything to do with what you, with your interpretation. And it is an interpretation in the simple sense. It's long observation. Painting previously, and much painting previously, not all painting, but believe me, because this goes all the way back, was based on studying the model, the human, and creating your own human. These guys are painting directly from life. This picture is, is in a book that you don't get this picture. This <laughs> is pretty close to what was happening there. This light is diffused enough, but you begin to see the full magic of the Impressionist world. You don't have any idea if you don't get this into a bright enough light. You don't have any idea the, 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 the color shifts through that small section called the face there. <laughs> And this picture is just delightful with that kind of stuff. So, and, and by the way, his idea of painting is put down a touch and leave it. He used the expression mosaic. Every area, its own color and its own value, isolated from every other area. One of the things people don't recognize about what we're doing when we're trying to paint is we're trying to actually make the human face the feature. So when her face glows like that, it isn't because he made it glow. It's be well, it is because he made it glow, but he set her up in the setting. So as Gamble would say, if you didn't set it up to look good, it ain't gonna look good when you get done copying it. <laughs> but one of the things that this kind of painter has found is that there is a thing called the visual order. There's actually a, an order in which things come to your eye. So we were taught as students to paint things as if they were coming out of a fog. It means actually there's an order to painting. There's a first thing to do and a second thing to do and a third thing to do, do you see what I mean? So whereas a lot of people in the self-taught world will go and say, all right, we'll do a nose and we'll attach an eye to it and pretty soon we'll have a face and we'll be gluing things on like that. They specifically were teaching you not to do that. So what they're doing over here is they're setting up three or four color notes. They're getting their darkest darks and their lightest lights. And they're getting the most chromatic notes and they're just setting them on the canvas and having a look. But so what you're doing is you're gonna set that tur dark turquoise over there and that kid's shirt over here, some color notes for the skin tones where the face is gonna be and you're gonna be just hitting some notes. Now if you blur your eyes and look at that, you'll see something's truly disappear, like the whole table goes away, right? But nevertheless, so that gets you an idea. Now if you look to the left of the little drawing there, what you see is for that picture, you'll see a whole lot of that drawing isn't drawn. And so we're talking this idea of lost and found. And lost and found is very fundamental to the same thing, to the idea of coming out of a fog. Lost just simply means that in this moment, in this painting, we aren't working there. All we have in front of us is darks and lights and the patterns they make. If you take any of those paintings that are highly lost and found and put them in black and white pictures, there's just an amazing mystery to the way the lost and found is losing and finding. I mean, it's just a, it's just a, f well, one of the things that's fundamentally happening is in that world when you start seeing, uh, a sharp edge, your eye actually innately picks up the set of the sharp edges. And when you see a red, your eye innately picks up the set of the redges and the music starts. Now if I take myself all the way over to that still life, I would suggest to you that's a one day picture. And don't treat it badly saying, well, you know, what, is he that bad a painter? <laughs> when you lay in a painting, this will give you a very good idea of what we've been talking about. When you lay in a painting, these are the sorts of things you'll see and there are a lot of things you, you won't find in this picture yet. And yet you'll look at his work, like Judge Hammond's face, and he, or his, the hands or whatever, and you'll see the level of articulation. He's not in any way limited to bringing on more and more, to bringing forth more levels of detail in smaller and smaller areas. It's tasteful as heck in color. And the whole thing, all the time, you know, the big, you know, the Boston School, big smash of light. But one of the things that's interesting that comes across, the more I look at this picture, the more I get a sense of justice, as much as I get a sense of Hammond. So there's this man here who obviously spent his year, his world, you know, his whole life was around something related to the law and, and, uh, and right and wrong and good and evil and all that. And there's something coming across in his face that makes me think those thoughts or reflect with him. So was that in his mind? It is, whatever, you're, whatever as a painter is in your mind is gonna come through on these canvases. 
But nevertheless, we're, we're looking at a moment in history, and this is 100 years, that I'm very pleased and thrilled to have been you know, a conduit for some others as well uh, to, for this kind of information, the kind of pleasure you can only get by long observation in the, in the woods, shall we say. So thank you all for being here, and thank you very much. For